Hello. This video is about Fortisor AI and Gen AI capabilities. So we'll have a look at some of the models empowering the analysts using Fortisor. Let's start with the typical uh, alert or ticket. So the analyst will have a, a summary of the ticket attributes right in the uh, main interface. And also we have a workspace where the analyst can communicate with each other and also with um, the variety of uh, automation workflows running for uh, the specific ticket. It's common for these playbooks to provide suggestions for the analyst to help with the case management. Uh, here, for example, one of these suggestions is to use the 40 AI to generate a mitre attack insight report. So basically it analyzes the uh, ticket and then provides what are the uh, uh, mitre attack records that are most likely relevant to this uh, to this alert or ticket is the same thing. And this is where we get to 40 AI. So 40 AI um, assistant uh, has this main uh, widget through which the analyst can interact with, uh, with the Gen AI. Uh, the analyst can ask uh, any sort of uh, questions right here. And we have the top questions uh, accessible through a single click uh, right from the uh, right, right from here. So for, for example, we were looking at the uh, mighty attack insights. We get a prompt. Um, this prompt is extremely important because this is how the how we make sure that no sensitive information is shared with the Gen AI, which could be considered as a, as a data leak. Um, as you can see, automatically, uh, Fortisor replaces any PII with uh, tags. And then once the response is, um, is um, fetched from, from the Gen AI, the um, Fortisor will swap back or to replace back the, the original values so that the analyst will have exactly the same data that uh, the ticket started with. So let's go ahead and request the MITRE attack insights. And here we have the most relevant tactics, uh, techniques, sub-techniques, and so on. We can add this result to the ticket so that Fortisol will automatically um, link the relevant uh, records to uh, to the alert so we can go to the correlation and we can see here we already have a, a message you know stating what has been done and right here we can see that we have uh, three software records we have two groups uh, groups as in uh, threat actors we have a tactic that we saw earlier and we have the sub technique um, which was um, you know uh, relevant to this uh, type of ticket well it's, it's very uh, normal we have here a large outbound uh, transfer to outside my country which is very likely a, an exfiltration uh, attempt. Another use case would be the investigation report. So after enrichment and triage and right before escalation, adding a summary would enable the tier two analysts to whom the uh, ticket would be escalated to have a much better understanding of the ticket in the best possible time. So here we are generating the report which we then attach to the ticket the same way we did for the previous one. Okay, before we leave this section, let's talk a little bit about a typical usage for the 40 AI um, assistant. So say I'm, I'm looking at a, at a ticket, I'm trying to have some data about, say, this file, right? So we can simply copy it and then write a simple question, plain English, something like, uh, what do you know about this file? Right. And here we have a rather accurate description of, uh, of the file path. So as we can read, the file path file does not match the standard naming conventions used by legitimate Windows update files and directories. Normally, Windows updates are handled through the Windows update service, which is actually correct. The file is malicious. And if you want more details, you can check uh, our video um, it's 40 sore uh, malware case management in the same channel. Now let's have a look at the other areas where 40 AI can be very helpful for 40 sore administrators and content creators. So here we are at the playbook editor where 40 sore users can use the 40 AI capabilities to generate playbooks from plain English descriptions. So let's have a quick example here. So let's say we want to get the virus total 
reputation for a local uh, IP address. So that could be a um, you know any uh, typical variable. Then if the reputation is not malicious, so we don't have much to do with uh, much processing to do. We can we could simply stop the playbook. So you can say if uh, the reputation is not malicious, so stop the playbook, right? Else, so if the reputation is malicious, what do, what do we do? We can block the IP on forty gate and send an email via SMTP. But we should specify via SMTP because we can send emails via Exchange Connector as well. So send email via SMTP, then look for IP matches in in FortiSim. So this would create a, an action that would um, look for events within FortiSim which has uh, you know a matching IP address. Right, so we search for the events in 40 sim and extract the private IP addresses from matching, so from matching events for each extracted IP. Um, what do we do? We simply try to find if there is a, a local asset um, in the system. So it, it would indicate a potentially infected one. So um, for each extracted IP, find if the if a local asset exists. All right. So let's just review the prompt quickly. Okay, we can simply send it. And the first thing AI will do is to prompt the user to check what kind of steps are proposed. So we have a list of steps in plain uh, JSON format that uh, the analyst or the, uh, the administrator can change. And if uh, the analyst agrees with these steps, and no changes are required. So we could simply uh, go ahead. All right. All right, here is the generated playbook, which we can attach to the trigger uh, step. It may require some uh, tweaking, maybe uh, checking uh, some of the variables used, but overall it provides, as you can see, a proper um, playbook, proper workflow, uh, right from a plain English description. Another aspect we can explore in 40AI would be the playbook counters. Say I have to uh, write a playbook to handle or to extract indicators from a CSV file. I would like some assistance, some insights on how to do just that. So let's just write the question. So something like how to create a playbook to extract uh, indicators from a CSV file. Great, and after some time, we get a proper step-by-step -step, uh, guide on how to do just that. In the same section, we have the Jinja helper. So this is very useful when we want to do some data transformation uh, required by, by our playbook. For example, sorting a list, which is what we'll do just now, or um, maybe finding out which variable is, uh, is null uh, in a list of variables, etc. So, um, yeah, suppose we have a list and want to know how to sort it from largest to smallest. We could simply write a question like, uh, I have a Jinja list of integers. Uh, let's call it uh, my list, as I have one in the, uh, in the Jinja editor. Uh, we'll see uh, in a few seconds. And so, uh, yeah, I have a Jinja list of integers, my list which I want to sort from largest to smallest, all right? Okay, so we get a, um, a suggested uh, Jinja expression to do just that. So we can simply copy it. So 
see how it works. All right, here we are. So we have a proper uh, sorting mechanism, which is exactly what we're looking for. And by now we would have reached the end of this section. So looking forward to seeing you in the next one.